what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Tactical Talks. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite guns. And I know I say that a lot, I have a lot of favorite guns. And I have different favorite guns, or I guess guns that are my favorite for different applications, right? I have my favorite truck gun. I have my favorite everyday carry gun. My favorite do-all gun. My favorite home defense gun. There's a gun kind of for every occasion, if you will. Now, people that aren't gun people don't understand, I always get the question, why do you need so many guns, right? It's, they're just like tools, and to me, that's exactly what they are. It's a tool. Depending on the job that I'm doing, or the task at hand, I want to have the right tool for the job. Now, considering the times that we're in now, due to this whole pandemic and all these other things that are going on, I, I'm not a big fan of selling guns right now. Now, I have sold guns in the past. I've sold guns, traded guns, obviously bought guns, anything gun related. I, I like to, to get my hands on certain things. Sometimes I realize that I buy guns just because I thought it looked cool. I end up selling it. There's some that I have sold that I didn't even shoot. It was just too good of a deal to pass up, find a better deal when I sell it, and then just kind of go from there. Now, the reason that this is one of my favorite guns is this one has that like nostalgic, um, I guess just means more to me, right? So this gun right here, a lot of people are not a fan of this gun. And maybe not even this gun specifically, but they're not a fan of this caliber, right? A lot of you guys know what I'm talking about now. This is a Glock 22 Gen 4, right? It's chambered in 40. Now this gun is actually clear. There's no magazine in. Lock that back. There's nothing in there. So we are 100% clear. We're still going to be safe with this thing, but we're not loaded right now. Now, a lot of people aren't fans of the 40. I don't know why, right? I've had a lot of people say, well, just get a 9 or just get a 45. There's no need for a 40. And everyone has an issue with 40. They say the ballistics between a 9 and a 40 are very similar, which I agree with. There have been studies that, that show the comparison in ballistics and velocity between the 9 and the 40, right? Ammo has come a long way, and there's very few changes at least in my opinion, that warrant me saying I want the 40 over the, over the 9. My duty uh, pistol went from this 40 to a SIG 9mm. Now, I had the option when I went to SIG to get a 9, a 40, or a 45. I knew that the ballistics weren't that different between 9 and 40, so that if I could carry more rounds and still get essentially the same outcome um, with penetration and, and with ballistics of the ammunition and everything, why not carry more ammunition and go with the 9? Now, there was a lot of people that said, well, that 45 is going to hit harder, this and that. I get it, but again, the more rounds I put down range, the better, in my opinion. So I went with 9. So I'm a fan of the 9mm. So I'm 100% on board with people saying 9 and 40 really don't make that big a difference. Why have a 40? The other thing is, I've seen people complain a lot about the 40 because of how much it kicks. Now, if you've never shot a 40, it's not ridiculous by any means, but if you're comparing, you know, the, the recoil and everything from a 9 to a 40, there is a not noticeable difference. This is very snappy. It's going to kick up to where my 9, at least with my SIG, it just pushes back. It, it doesn't have as much kick up and snap. But this was the first pistol that was issued to me when I became a police officer. So this gun is never going anywhere. Again, I'm not the biggest 40 fan. I don't have anything against around. I've had zero issues with it. I've shot it. I've, I'm pretty decent as far as accuracy with this thing. So I didn't have any issues. I carried this thing, I want to say it was six years, five and a half, six years roughly, from the time it was issued to me to the time that we moved um, to our new duty pistols. This is one that I will hand down to my daughter once I'm dead and gone. If she decides she wants to sell it, do whatever she wants, at that point, it doesn't really matter. I'm not here to make those decisions. But this is something that I will hand down because, like I said, this is just kind of one of those nostalgic pieces to me. It's a Glock. I've never had any issues with it. This was the only Glock that I have and have had that is bone stock. Did zero things to this gun other than add a light to it. Now, when I got this gun, it came with the Tritium Night Sights. So that is an upgrade to the gun. They don't necessarily come like that. 
but I think these did because they were a law enforcement um, package. Other than that, it's 100% bone stock. You know, I usually do trigger upgrades, trigger connects, all the internals. I do different grips, all that stuff. But I've kept this one bone stock for a couple of reasons, right? One, it's what my department mandated. So while I was carrying this at work, that's how it had to stay, right? So again, the whole nostalgia behind it, I didn't want to get it and change it and flip it around and do all these things to it. Now, something that all of my guns have, even though I'm not sponsored, but I would love to be, my Talon grips, is I put the Talon rubberized grips on all my guns. Very inexpensive, but very effective. The only reason I have not done that to this one, early, early on in my career, and this is a little bit of a story time, early, early on in my career, I was chasing a guy. It was my first guy who ran from me on foot, right? And me and my buddy Ethan went to this guy's house. He had a bunch of warrants felony warrants, all this stuff. So we were backing another officer. Now that other officer, unfortunately, was allowing this individual too much movement, right? When, he, we, when we knew he was gonna be arrested, we should have just put him in handcuffs. That should have been the end of it. I was a brand new officer, which doesn't give me, you know, that's not an excuse, but I was a brand new officer. So I was allowing this senior officer to, to do the, her thing. Um, Unfortunately, we ended up in a position where she gave him too much freedom. As we were passing the front door, he bolts out the front door, takes off running. He wasn't the fastest person, but he was wearing basketball shorts, and we're wearing full gear. So we take off running. She takes off first, then me, then my buddy. We're running, running, running. I end up passing her, so now it's me and him, and I'm inching, inching closer and closer as the seconds pass. We're coming up to an intersection, and as I go, and I'm about to reach up and grab this guy um, to detain him, I end up stepping in a pothole right as, as he starts turning. I step in a pothole, and I lose it, right? Luckily, this wasn't recorded. There's no video of this anywhere, at least that I know of. So as I fall, I try to catch myself. I'm moving way too fast, and I fall on my side on my gun. And it is a horrible, horrible feeling when you fall on that holster and on that gun, I had a huge bruise on the side of my leg for like a week, week and a half. And I fell on the street. I slid. In my head, it probably looked cooler than what actually happened, but I slid. I rolled over, end up kind of landing back on my feet, get up, and I take off running. At that point, my buddy speeds past me, so now he's in front of me. We've essentially just switched positions. We run up. He grabs the guy, takes the guy down. I'm able to jump on top of both of them. We get him in handcuffs. Nobody was injured. Everything went according to plan as far as getting him in handcuffs, arrested, and then off to jail, right? So for years, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up. For years, I've had these big old gashes. Scratches here, gash here, little tiny stuff here. Most of it is here and then right here on the back. Now, they were worse, but grabbing this over and over and over rubbing 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 i've kind of smoothed it out and there's a little bit right there again hard to see on camera but those gashes are there so every time that i grab my gun i would feel those gashes and they weren't horrible to their, where they were hurting my hand but i did feel them and it was a reminder every time that i went to work and every time that i put my hand on my gun it was a reminder to stay alert at any point anybody can take off running now, that is the lighter side of it. Luckily, he ran instead of fighting or reaching for a gun or doing whatever else. But that was my reminder every single day that I went to work. Those gashes on there just kind of help remind me, keep my head on a swivel. Because at any point, anything can happen and things aren't going to always go according to plan. This light, even though this is not a gun that I carry, I carried this gun with this light on it. These things aren't cheap, but I didn't want to remove it. Again, because it's just kind of like that package deal. This is exactly how I carried it on duty. It was either, like I said, five and a half or six years. So this gun is not going anywhere. Um, I really thought, well, I, I thought that I would share this with you guys. Like I said, I have a lot of guns that I just probably won't sell. But this is definitely one that's going to stick with me till the day that I die. After that, they can do whatever they want with it, whether it's my wife or my daughter. But do you guys have a gun like that? Do y'all have a gun that was passed down in your family? So maybe your, the first gun that you bought. My first gun that I bought, I sold years and years ago. Um, but anyways, do y'all have a gun 
that you just refuse to sell no matter what. Now, if you're thinking about selling guns, I will tell you as long as it's legal wherever you live and you do it through the proper channels, Glocks right now are going like crazy. And a lot of the ones I'm seeing are going for more than what you know they originally sold for when they were first released. So if you're looking at making money and you could care less about the actual gun, it's a good time to sell because you'll make some decent money. However, keep in mind that these guns are harder to find. So if you have a limited amount of guns and you probably don't want to get rid of some because they're harder to find more, I recommend not selling them. I'm at a point right now where I'm not selling anything. Um, some of the stuff I have is worth some decent money, but I'm not necessarily looking for the money because there's the guns that I just don't want to get rid of, such as this one. But Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the 40. Let me know what you think of Glock. And then, like I said, let me know if there's a gun that you guys have that you just refuse to get rid of. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down below, like I said. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit that bell notification so you guys know every time I post a video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.